was kind of weird to go to a graffiti jam and I brought the hammer and everyone was looking uh, strangely to me. A hammer, a chisel, a jackhammer. I sometimes use explosives, sometimes use uh, just a knife. I'm kind of a urban archaeologist because I basically carve on the walls of the city. My name is Alexander Fartu Vils and I'm an artist. I was 13 years old when I was doing graffiti at first and when I was 16 I you know, started to really question what I was doing and reflecting on growing up in Lisbon where you had the huge muralist movement in the 70s and then a huge boom with advertising in the 80s and then graffiti in the 90s and the city started to paint everything white and then more graffiti. I started to realize that the walls were not just walls, they were accumulating the layers of changes and the history of that same city. So I came up with the idea of instead of adding to the walls, I would not just add to the walls, I would go to them and break the wall and extracting and exposing the layers that were inside of the city in a way. And that process of thinking brought me to another media as well, like the billboard works, uh, which are advertising posters that I would go and vandalize them in a way, but creating a portrait of someone that was living in that same city, uh, to doors that were demolished from places that were being demolished, to a lot of other medias, but always with this thinking of an act of destruction that was creating. It was an homage to the everyday heroes that live in the cities that go from A to B, that make the whole the city work and make them visible. It was mostly illegal and it was not really um, something that was valued by the city. It was part of my growth and where I learned a lot of the things and the skills that I have today. Um, it's part of my history, let's say. I was invited to be part of Ken's festival and I was uh, lucky enough to be next to, to Banksy and that that was the first time that the carving work was known by a lot of people that went through, through it. From that moment I realized that the work that I was doing in Lisbon, that I was seeing in Lisbon, was also happening in a lot of other cities and that the walls of each city tells their own histories. So I started to do projects in different places and one of those places was actually Rio in Brazil. It's part of the um, Morro was being demolished and it was in a big transformation. And people were not being heard and they were being expropriated. So we end up carving their portraits on um, the ruins of the houses where they were living for generations. And eventually that brought attention to that situation. I started to realize the impact that the work could have um, in a broader sense. And humanly, I cannot do it alone, so I created the studio and that's where we work on, on, on pieces and on projects. I go and I, I, I draw and I photograph people from that same community, I interview, and then I go on a wall and sometimes I paint on it, or sometimes I, I use a projection, sometimes a stencil, and then I just go on the wall and, and carve it. Basically, a hammer, a chisel, a jackhammer, I sometimes use explosives, sometimes use the, just a knife, but then there's a lot that it doesn't come down to me, and it comes down to the layers of a wall. It happens the same with uh, the, the woodworks or the metal. I never know what's, what's underneath uh, them. So it's almost kind of a interaction and the acceptance of the, the, the material to dictate the final result. I have an impression of what I want to do. I start, but then it's also the wall that dictates what I actually do. When you work on a public space, it's, it's ephemeral by nature. So you don't know if that work is going to stay there forever or if it's going to be painted over or if it's going to be destroyed. But I think that makes the art that you do in the public space more human because it's like us and we evolves. With explosives you need authorization and there is a huge complex way of doing it. It's usually one nanosecond and then a lot of smoke so that's why I also use a slow motion camera that allows us to create
creates another work. It's a complex logistical operation sometimes and it's a lot of invisible work. There is a phrase of uh, José Saramago, which is um, chaos is an order to be deciphered, chaos is a more than deciphered, which I really resonate to, and I think in a way, in the chaos of our daily lives and my daily life, um, uh, creating with that chaos is, is where I find some sense to all of this. So until today, it's my therapy, I would say so.